Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. It has been over a month now since Dennis and I drove across the United States in one of ABC Company's all-electric, battery-powered, double-decker Van Hool TDX25E. About a month ago, I made a video on this channel kind of recapping the entire 13-day, 3,000-mile journey when I first came back. The video mainly focused on the difficulties we encountered while trying to charge the vehicle uh, on our way across the US, but many of you had a lot of questions about the techs and specs of the bus we drove, and there were a lot of myths and misconceptions about this giant land behemoth. So today, I figured it was a good opportunity to give you guys all the history, specs, and technical details of the Van Hool TDX25, which is the diesel variant, as well as the TDX25E, which is the electric variant. The Van Hool TDX25E is the battery electric variant of the diesel-powered Van Hool TDX25. The E at the end of the model number denotes that the coach is an all-electric vehicle with an electric motor powering it, as opposed to the original Van Hool TDX25, which was the original diesel variant. The TDX25 and the TDX25E, which are part of the Van Hool TX model series, are both double-decker luxury touring coaches available in Canada and the United States. The original diesel variant, Van Hool TDX25, was first launched in 2015 and introduced to the public at the 2015 UMA Bus Expo in New Orleans, Louisiana, and designed to replace the previous model of Van Hool's double-decker coach operating in North America, the Van Hool TDX925 Astro Mega, which came out 10 years earlier in 2005. The original diesel variant TDX25 saw a lot of success servicing the US market, and six years later, towards the end of 2021, Van Hool released the battery electric variant of the coach, the TDX25E. The coach was revealed to the public towards the end of 2021, the first coach being an actual 2022 model. Aside from its sheer size and impressive profile when driving down the road, the TDX25E has the largest battery in its class at 676 kilowatt of power. The coach is capable of charging from zero to full in four hours. Now keep in mind that's if the charger is in perfect working order. The coach had an approximate range of 250 miles per charge, and yes, that is with a full load of passengers and their luggage and with all the amenities working on board like AC, heat, TV, Wi-Fi, lights, etc. Now on ABC's website, it says that the TDX25E has a passenger capacity of 69 passengers, but the coach actually has a capability of supporting 75 passengers as an optional floor plan. Just for comparison, Van Hool's single deck coach, the CX45, has a capacity of 56 passengers. Now, when it comes to luggage, the diesel variant double-decker TDX25 has a luggage storage capacity of 279 cubic feet in the luggage bay, which are located to the rear of the coach behind the passenger cabin, and 65.33 cubic feet of parcel rack storage, whereas the electric variant TDX25E has a further reduced luggage storage of only 155 cubic feet with the same 65.33 cubic feet of parcel rack storage. This is due to the large amount of batteries that are now taking the space of where luggage compartments would be on the diesel version of the coach. The coach is 45 feet long with a clearance of 13 feet 2 inches, so that would be 13.7 meters long and a height of 4 meters for those of you watching in other parts of the world. The Van Hool TDX25E is truly powerful with an actual deed-tuned electric motor, which means they have to really nerf the motor so that the bus could simulate the actual feel of a traditional diesel engine for the drivers. The TDX25E has a max torque at 4,242 foot-pounds and a maximum of 485 horsepower. With all that power under the hood, the coach is actually significantly quieter and with much less vibrations compared to that of the actual diesel variant. I would say that the Van Hool TDX25V definitely possesses the character of being the strong and silent type. That's a little joke. Now, one more thing I wanted to add while driving the Van Hool TDX25E across the country was that it was so weird to not feel any type of shifting during acceleration. 
It made the ride so much smoother and during turns, it actually handled really nicely. Considering that it was a double decker coach, it actually has a very low center of gravity with a very low amount of swaying. The coach also has regenerative braking that allows a driver to adjust the intensity of the amount of regenerative braking power to apply. Now this feature was not working for me on my cross country trip and ABC did explain the reason for that and it was because that the regenerative braking program was set up to work with a smart steering wheel and the coach I drove didn't have a smart steering wheel installed. It won't be installed until Tuesday. Now once a smart steering wheel is installed on that coach, the regenerative braking system would be then usable by the driver. This is also the same reason why the coach I drove also didn't have cruise control. The TDX 25E is also equipped with a full suite of telematics for real-time monitoring of the vehicle performance. During my trip, I felt like we had the entire NASA control room uh, monitoring and supporting us. We got an eye on your meds here. I give you a buffalo nickel if you'll calm down just a little bit. ABC engineers could see when we were charging, how fast we were charging, and how much juice we were using on the road. Really awesome feature. Now, one quick correction I want to make is that I mentioned in one of my videos about the bus that uh, the battery weighed 22,000 pounds. I don't know if you guys watched that video and heard me say that, and that is actually incorrect. The battery on board actually weighs 10,377 pounds. So ABC, correct me on that, and uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, I just want to set the record straight here. Along with all of that, the coach also comes with a full suite of advanced driver assistance aids, such as a digital dash, keyless ignition switch. Now I will say that the location of the start switch was uh, very uh, not intuitive for me as it was weird having it down so low to the right. I kept wanting to reach to the left uh, next to my left knee because that's where the start buttons usually are located on coach buses. Now for the driver and passengers, the coach offered a ISRI 6832-87 driver's seat with lumbar support, interior upper deck cameras, electric windshield sun visors, central air locking baggage and service doors, as well as a deluxe tour guide seat up front with heated mirrors and road viewing monitoring system. Now the coach also was equipped with a full coach raise and lowering system, as well as a front kneeling feature with quick recovery systems. Now, I did notice that on our trip, our coach did not have a DVD media system on board. It did have a radio, but that was it. There were no TV screens uh, mounted throughout the coach for the rest of the passengers. And as I mentioned times before, there was also no cup holder for the driver. Now, ABC has been a really good sport about Dennis and I lighting them up at every opportunity uh, we could find about uh, not having a cup holder. I mean, you try driving 3,000 miles with no cup holder. The props to ABC on taking that uh, like a champ, and I did find out why that was the fact. But I was kind of shocked that someone purposely asked the manufacturer not to include cup holders so that their drivers could not have beverages while driving their passengers around. I mean, that's just kind of mean. And finally, the TDX 25E has a turn radius of 40 feet, and that's pretty impressive considering that it does not have a steerable tag axle, but the tag axle is liftable. Now, there were a lot of myths and misconceptions and questions about why the coach didn't have certain abilities that would seem kind of obvious. Well, ABC read all the comments and questions uh, underneath the videos I released about my trip, and uh, they wanted me to give all of you who asked me some of these questions some answers. First, a lot of you asked about why the bus didn't have extension cords while we were trying to charge and the charging was really difficult because sometimes the charging station cords wouldn't reach. Well, extension cords are not an option when charging. Charging cords are by no means standard and they also introduce additional resistance to a high energy charge, which could cause issues and concerns. Some of you asked about Tesla chargers. For now, that's not an option. We could not charge a coach with Tesla chargers. Now, it could work with Tesla chargers in the future once Tesla opens up their chargers, i.e. the truck chargers that they made. Uh, the Tesla chargers definitely use a different charging port and protocol, so that's why we did not use Tesla chargers while on the trip, and we couldn't even if we wanted to. Another question was, is it possible to have multiple charging ports and have them simultaneously charge a coach? The answer is no to the simultaneous charging, but the request for multiple ports is actually currently under manufacturing engineering review. So the multiple charging ports add wiring and controls. 
Uh, they also require safe and secure paths from the front of the vehicle to the rear where the charge controllers reside. Now, some of you asked about charge times. Now, when it comes to charge times, in ideal situations, it takes four hours for a full charge at a rate of 150 kilowatt hours. Uh, on the charge rate, optimal charging speed is uh, between zero to 80% and uh, the charging actually slows down once the battery reaches 80% uh, to 100% to prevent damage to the battery. Same for all the electric vehicle cars out there. Uh, another question was, could you use a 110 slash 120 volt regular outlet to charge the bus overnight? The answer to that is no. Van Hool does not accommodate uh, level one or level two chargings. It's just impractical for timing. Basically what that means is it would take forever if you just plug your electric bus into a wall outlet. And that honestly just sounds hilarious. Does the vehicle have regenerative braking to help with charging? And the answer is yes. Of the energy consumed, we can see that almost 20% of it was uh, regained from regenerative energy in stop and go travel. Uh, ABC Van Hools did note that on uh, my trip, the region was about 10%, 20% uh, seems reasonable. Solar panels for charging. Yes, solar panels are available to help charge uh, certain things on the coach. However, they only charge the low voltage side of things like the fans, the blowers, the TV, media system, etc. The solar panels do not produce enough energy to charge the battery strings, which is what actually propels the bus. Solar panels simply do not produce enough energy and it require a lot more room than what is available on vehicles to be able to have the solar panel actually charge the propulsion uh, side of the bus. Now, a lot of you asked about cost per mile. Now, charging costs vary widely. Uh, the charging costs at public chargers I was using were about 46 cents per kilowatt hour, but charging at a bus depot, which means uh, if we were to build our own chargers, which ABC did out west for some of the clients using these buses, it can range from nine cents to approximately 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So if we weren't dependent on public charging grids like Electrify America, it would have been closer to $600 for the entire trip versus the $1,800 that it took us to cross the US, which by the way, costs more than uh, what diesel would have cost us. So definitely cheaper to charge if we had our own charging stations. Uh, another question about uh, weight. Uh, the bus is really not heavier than that of a diesel bus when in service. So ABC uh, explained that the bus has the same gross vehicle weighting rating, uh, GVWR, unlike that of cars that can weigh uh, between 3,000 and 6,000 pounds. These coaches have to meet a GVWR regulations for commercial passenger carrying vehicles. And that's what drives the balance of battery size, passenger count, etc. Now this vehicle is approximately 6,600 pounds heavier according to ABC. Now the TDX25 diesel variant is definitely used widely today by many companies in North America to drive long distances and take large groups of passengers on extended day tours and trips. But the TDX25E battery electric variant is by no means intended for long range travel and extended cross country trips. Where the TDX25E does thrive is local shuttling. So even though ABC asked me to drive one of these across the country, it was more so to test out and document what it would be like and what is still lacking as far as uh, being able to drive a large battery electric vehicle while using public charging stations. Now, I got a lot of comments from viewers about how horrible this bus was and how some of you even asked me whether or not ABC was embarrassed about the fact that I revealed all of my troubles over the road driving one of these. And the answer is absolutely not. The folks at ABC were not offended by my content that I put out because it's simply the truth. The purpose of my trip was not a marketing stunt from ABC to sell more of these double-decker electric buses and try to convince tour bus companies to buy these and try to run them on long-range trips. It was a bold move on ABC's part to show the public how unprepared our public charging infrastructure was. And in my point of view, after driving this trip, the US government's goal to push for 50% of all commercial vehicles being battery electric by 2030 is kind of unrealistic because of how horrible our charging infrastructure was. The bus itself, the TDX25E, was actually a real treat to drive. The passengers on board, being Dennis's wife Tracy, 
My wife Lydia and my kids actually found the bus very pleasant to ride after being on board for 13 days and 3,000 miles. And finally, I just want to conclude today's video with this. There's so much political drama that is all tied up with whether or not a vehicle has an electric motor or combustion motor under the hood, and it's just so stupid. Look, I'm an Android guy. I typically don't like to use Apple products. And that's not to say that Apple makes worse products or Android makes better products. I'm just not used to the way the Apple stuff works. But if I owned a cell phone store, I would be stupid not to carry both products, despite my personal feelings towards one brand or the other. I would be failing so hard as a business owner if I let my personal feelings get in the way of the type of products I carry. And on the other side of the coin, I'm not going to stop going to or start hating on my favorite phone dealer just because they started carrying a product that I don't like. Bus manufacturers and dealers like ABC Van Hool and MCI are by no means abandoning diesel or replacing them with electric vehicles. They're both still very proud of their diesel products and just because they're both playing around with and now selling a lineup of battery electric buses, it doesn't mean that they're saying it's better than diesel, nor are they trying to push it on anyone. And if your reasoning for hating EV technology is because of some political reasoning or how the government is handling this whole thing, well, that's fine. I kind of agree with you, but don't take it out on the manufacturers. They're just trying to develop and sell products that they think the public may be interested in in the future. And that's not an easy job to do. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to stay tuned for more vlogs on my other channel as I finish editing them. And if you haven't checked out the first three yet, go check it out, my other channel, J Wang Vlogs. As always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.